I love bullet journals. I think they're all amazing. But I wanted to create a digital version of a bullet journal in Apple Notes. I've tried to incorporate the main concept of bullet journaling, so things like monthly uh, logs, weekly logs, collections, migration, signifiers, and everything else, but in a digital way, trying to leverage at the same time the capabilities of Apple Notes on my iPhone or my Mac. I imagine if you're watching this video that you already know what a bullet journal is, but in case you don't, it is basically a method to structure your thoughts and plan your days. Or from a different perspective, it's an amazing way to waste time doodling on a notebook. Anyway, this channel is about simplification. So without wasting any more time, let's get started and let me show you how I've created a digital bullet journal in Apple Notes. We're going to explore this digital version of the bullet journal, which I've flexed a bit to accommodate some of the things that Apple Notes can do better than the bullet journal, but also to um, accommodate some limitations of Apple Notes. It's a bullet journal which is completely digital, completely typed, so there is no handwriting in this one, although nothing prevents you from using your Apple Pencil on your iPad if you uh, want to do that. So everything starts with this index page, which contains a link to the most important things in a bullet journal, namely the monthly log, the weekly log, and the future log, a series of collections, a series of trackers, and then maybe links to specific pages for uh, reference. I'm going to show you all these pages in a second, but as you can see, this leverages one of the new features of Apple Notes, which is the ability to link pages. Um, I've already created a page called Monthly Log, which is here. Um, and to link it's really, really simple. The only thing that I need to do is to type a couple of uh, greater than signs and the list of pages will appear. These are all notes in my, in my vault. Now, this one appears at the top, so I can just click on it to create a link. Um, but if you don't see the page, you can start typing the name of the page and it will appear. So in this case, I've just created a link to my monthly log. And by the way, these links can be changed. If I right click on it, I can edit the link and I can maybe give it a different name using, if I want, even an emoji to um, say I want to use this one, monthly log, I can accept it. And now my link contains the text that I wanted and the icon that I wanted. I'm going to delete this one. Okay, so the index points to um, a series of logs that form the basis of my planning. The monthly log, as in a standard bullet journal, contains all the days of the month ahead with an indication of the key events. So if I click on it, you can see that I'm opening this page. I've added a banner at the top just by dragging a picture. And then this is my monthly log. I've got a column for the number of the day, a column for the initial of the weekday. And then for the most important dates, I've got a brief description of what that is. These are the things that at some point I will bring to my weekly planning when it's time to do so. Uh, as you can see, I've got important dates and events up here, and then a list of tasks that maybe don't have a specific date, but I want to complete on this particular month. Um, one thing that I want you to um, notice is there is um, a red color for, the, for weekends. Now, this is a feature that is available on the Mac version of Apple Notes, but it's not available on uh, iPhones and, um, and iPads. And it's the ability to assign color to text. It's a very simple feature. I don't really get why it's not available on mobile devices, but there it is. So if you want to change the color of um, some text, you can highlight the text you want to change. In this case, this Friday, you then press Shift Command C to bring up the colors, and then you can change the color. Of that letter. Um, let's say I want to make it green. And there you have it. It's green. And this color will be reflected on iPhone and iPad. You won't be able to change it on those devices, but you will see it. So it's really weird, but it works that way. I'm going to undo the change, close this. And now we're going to move to um, the weekly log, back to the index. And by the way, I've pinned the index to the top um, to pin items. As you probably know, you need to right click on them and click pin. In this case, it says unpin because it's already pinned. Um, I can then go to my weekly log 
And my weekly log in this example contains one week, the 15th of January in this case, but it could be any week. The important point is that you start on a Monday and end on a Sunday, so it's just one week. And of course, it contains a more detailed planning for the week. So things to do, um, some uh, notes, maybe a couple of uh, meetings, and anything that you capture during the day. This will be the concept of rapid logging in the bullet journal. So in this case, I've saved a quote. The answer is 42 from a book. What you're supposed to do is that at the end of the week, you can then transfer things that you haven't been able to complete to one of the following days or maybe to the future log. And this process is the migration process um, from a bullet journal. So if I go back to the index, I have a future log here, which is linked again, and that contains a list of things that I want to do at some point. Some of them will be unscheduled, pay in the room, sell the PS5 and find a job. <laughs> and some of the things will be scheduled. So I have a target month in which I probably um, want to do these things. Some of them are not going to move. You know, one birthday will always stay there. But other things may move slightly. And the closer you get to that month, the more um, you can plan accordingly. So as you can see, it's a full list of the year ahead. Again, when February is approaching, for example, hopefully your ski holiday will have better dates and you can put them into your monthly log or even your weekly log when you get to that point. And if I go back to the index now, we're going to move to the next thing, which is a key component of the bullet journal, which is collections. Now, collections are simply a series of pages that are dedicated to a specific topic. It could be something you research or maybe a list of books, like in this case, or films that you've watched or anything, just things that have a common theme. So in my case, I wanted to keep track, uh, for example, of a list of books that I wanted to read. So I created this page, Books to Read. And this is my uh, list. I've got a checklist here with a series of titles and authors. And um, I'm checking, um, I'm, I'm thinking this every time I read uh, one of these books. And maybe I add a quick comment to, to the book just to keep track of what I'm re reading. Um, so you can create as many pages as you want. Um, this list is very likely to become longer and longer the more you use your bullet journal. And this is the beauty of having links, because the more pages you create, the more this list is going to grow. So finding things will require a lot of scrolling, unless you create a link, which is going to be the easiest thing to do. Now, let's get to the other point, um, which is very typical on a bullet journal, which is trackers. Now, we're not going to be able to replicate the beauty of some of those bullet journals you can find online, where people spend literally hours crafting beautiful trackers. So I thought it was going to be a good occasion to try and do the best that we could in Apple Notes and still making it usable. Now, I want to show you the, the, the quick and dirty way of creating a tracker, which is this one, where you just create a list of days and you check the ones where you complete whatever you want to do. In this case, it would be mindfulness. My target is 20 minutes per day. And if I've done it on this day, I'm just going to check this thing. And by the way, the standard setting for Apple Notes is that as soon as you check something, it will end up at the bottom of the list. If you don't want this to happen in a tracker like this, what you need to do is to open your settings for Apple Notes and uncheck this box, automatically sort ticked items. If it is like this, every time you check one, it will end up at the bottom. If you uncheck this one, it will behave like this. You can check them off without moving them. Now, I'm not particularly fond of uh, this layout. I don't think it's, you know, nice enough. So I've created another one, and that's another experiment. If you come up with better ideas, please let me know in the comments. Um, I've got a habit tracker that tracks all the habits that I may want to track. And as you can see, it's three here, running, fasting, and reading. And I've created it this way. I've used this layout, which is the... Um, the one that Apple calls monostyled, which is really uh, a fixed width fonts because it's easier to align things. And I've said running is this column, fasting is going to be tracked in this column and reading in this one. And then I've got a list of days and every day I can put in 
uh, my check mark for um, for my activity. So um, the way I do it is that basically I put an icon here, then I leave three spaces, put another one, then leave three spaces and put the next one. This way they stay um, very consistent, properly aligned, and this thing shows up on, on an iPhone um, very nicely as well. And I think it gives a really interesting bird's eye view of how well um, um, uh, I'm tracking against my targets. Now, going back to the index, and the last thing to mention here is the reference list. So if there are pages that you reference on a regular basis, maybe they're not part of the trackers or collections or things like that, just the, something that you want quick access to, but you want to keep them separate, you can create additional links in this area. So I've created a list for quotes, for example. So if in, um, as an example, if in my weekly log, I've jotted down something that I thought it was interesting, like this quote, for example, at the end of the week, I decide that I want to keep this quote on in one of my collections. So I'm going to go to my quotes list and I'm going to type this down. So now it's stored permanently there. And this brings me to the next item. So once you have your monthly, weekly log and future log linked to a specific page, what you're supposed to do is that at the beginning of each month, you will go into your monthly log, for example, update all the dates and redo this page, really. And that is fine because the link keeps working. If you want to keep track of your monthly log, for example, you want to store it somewhere, what you can do is to click on the existing monthly log before you change it. You can duplicate it. So this will be a copy of your monthly log. You can give it a different name. So in this case, you can simply uh, remove this maybe. So the name of the month remains there. And you can drag this into a January folder. So I've created already some folders in here um, with the number at the beginning so they stay uh, organized. And I can simply drag this one here into the January folder where it will be organized. And the same thing I can do for my weekly log, for example. If I want to keep track of this weekly log just to see what I've done during that week and um, keep track of that stuff, before I update this weekly log for the next week, I can duplicate it. I can just change the name so it's um, it's clear what this refers to, and then I can simply drag it to my uh, folder. This way, you will never have to change your weekly log and your links. What else can I tell you? Um, there are a few things that you can do to automate the creation of these pages because, frankly, it, it is a bit tedious. So, for example, if you want to create your monthly log from scratch, of course, you can go in and uh, type every single day and the day of the week and uh, leave, leave a tab in between. So, two, tab, that will be Thursday, tab, and then three, and so on. But, of course, it's a time-consuming thing. The, best, the better thing um, you can do is to open... Um, Microsoft Excel or Numbers on Mac or Google Sheets and create a simple table like this one. This is very easy to create. You just drag um, from here, for example, and there you create the first week and then you repeat and, and copy across. It's going to be much easier. Then you select, I suggest, the three of them so it will create another tab between this and whatever you write in your monthly uh, folder and then you can copy and paste it into your um, monthly log. But now, look at what happens. It, it was pasted as a table. You don't want that to happen. You want this format. And in order to achieve that, undo this, what you need to do is to go in here, edit, paste, and match style. There you go. Now you have it, your list of days, your uh, list of weekdays. And when you click, you will have uh, space to write whatever you need. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to remove this, go back to the um, index page. So that's it. This is the digital version of the bullet journal in Apple Notes. Apple Notes has many more interesting features. Have a look at this video here to discover my top 10 list of features. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this digital bullet journal in Apple Notes. I'm sure it can be improved in many ways, so please let me know your ideas in the comments below. 
For now, though, thank you very much for watching and see you soon.